Hi guys, in this short video I want to give a little bit of intuition over the Dirac delta function, which is named after Paul Dirac, an English physicist. It is denoted by the Greek letter small delta, and one way to look at it is as a limit of some distribution whose support becomes narrower and narrower until it uh, collapses into a single point. And let me explain what I mean by that. Um, we can do this with all kinds of distributions, but let's say we have a uniform distribution which is symmetric around the zero. And what happens as I decrease the support of the distribution? Notice that um, the PDF, the actual uh, value of the function goes up as the support goes down. And what will happen as it's uh, take the limit of this as a approaches, uh, if this distribution is between minus a and a, as a approaches zero, well, and the limit, the pointwise uh, value at zero will be infinite. But notice that since it's a distribution, we still require that the integral uh, over the support will be one. So what it means, it means that the integral of this function which is zero everywhere except here, yeah, between, uh, in this case, minus 0 0.42 and 0 0.42. Uh, and as we take this uh, a to zero, the function will be zero ev everywhere except at the point zero, and at the point zero, its value will be infinite. Okay, uh, but we don't have to do it only with, um, with a uniform distribution, we can also do it with a normal distribution, let's say also with a mean zero. And we can see that as we take uh, a to uh, zero, as in this case, a represents sigma, the standard deviation of the distribution. Well, as we take it to uh, zero, it also gets narrower and narrower and in the limit, uh, the point will be, um, the PDF will be zero everywhere except at the point zero, and at the point zero, we estimate that the limit will be infinite. And still, because it's a distribution, we expect it that the um, integral over the support will be one. Well, how will the uh, CDF of this normal distribution look like as we take it to zero? Well, it will just collapse, 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 collapse until it, we basically get a step function, I, meaning that um, all the values before zero are zero and all the values after zero are one. And it means that the CDF, the probability of getting a less or equal uh, value than a certain value is a step function. And this also means that this is a distribution that has 100% of getting the value zero. So it maps all the values with uh, probability one to zero. And so this is the first property of a Dirac delta function, meaning which is that the integral of this distribution doesn't matter from where to where, as long as zero is in there, will be equal to one. Another property that this distribution has is that if you take any function and you multiply it by this uh, distribution, well, it will be just the value of this distribution at zero. Yeah, because this function over here is zero for every other value uh, except zero. And at the point zero, it is infinite. And one way to look at it is to say, okay, so uh, why is it true? Well, since it's zero everywhere except in the point zero, then uh, we will just get f of x doesn't matter what times zero so we can f of x can only actually get a value at the point zero so we can say okay this is f of zero times delta x dx and now we can take it out and we will get f zero times the integral dx and this we know that the integral is a distribution so it has to be one and this is f of zero but another way to think of it is to say Okay, what, what is this expression here? If this is a distribution, then this expression here is just a mean of, with regard to this distribution, yeah, of this function f of x, right? 
what is the mean of some function with regard to some arbitrary distribution, let's say pi. Well, it's just the weighted average of this function over the distribution pi, where pi is the, uh, the weights of all, each point in f. But what happens if pi is a delta distribution? Well, there's only one point. We only care about one point, and so we only take that point in the function. So 100% of the weighted average will be on that point, which means will be f of zero. And we can also shift this delta function. Yeah, we can take delta to be um, some c minus x. Yeah, and so when this expression is equal to zero, which is happens when x is equal to c, then we have the spike. So instead of having the spike here at zero, we are moving the spike to some constant c. So we are taking this to c. And this is how you denote the delta function. Usually if you uh, uh, graph it, it's just uh, an arrow up on the point where you concentrate the mass of the function. Cool, so what can we do with uh, the Dirac delta function? Well, one thing we can do is take the second derivative of the absolute value of x. So if this is the absolute value of x, right? And we can say that the first derivative is plus one when x is greater than zero and minus one when x is less than zero. Well, what's the second derivative? Okay, we just get a function here that is plus one and minus one. Well, the second derivative will be equal to two times the delta function. Because you can think of this thing over here as two times the CDF yeah, of the Dirac function minus one. And so taking the derivative of this will just be two times the Dirac function. Or another way to think of it is just saying we have a jump of two here from minus one to one and a Dirac delta function represent a jump of one. So this was my small attempt to give some intuition about the Dirac delta function. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.